In this video, we will clarify who has ultimate responsibility for government. And that question leads us to examine the notion of responsible government. The High Court of Australia through New South Wales versus Bardolph, through a decision written by Justice Dixon, referred to responsible government as follows. He said, the principles of responsible government impose on the administration a responsibility to Parliament, or rather to the House, which deals with finance for what the administration has done. The case of Lang versus Australian Broadcasting Corporation also gives us a sense of what responsible government means. In that case, the High Court said, Sections 62 and 64 of the Constitution combine to provide for the executive power of the Commonwealth to be exercised on the initiative and advice of ministers. The requirement that the Parliament meet at least annually, the provision for control of supply by the legislature, the requirement that ministers be members of the legislature, the privilege of freedom of speech and debate, and the power to coerce the provision of information provide the means of enforcing the responsibility of the executive to the organs of government. These two high court decisions identify two key ideas of responsible government. The first one is that the Crown acts on the advice of its ministers. The ministers control all the functions of executive government. Secondly, the ministers are responsible to the parliament for the actions of the crown. And as a consequence, the executive government is accountable to parliament. So who is responsible for government? Although ministers administer the, the departments of government and constitute the formal body that advises the governor general, there is actually a smaller group of more important ministers chosen by the prime minister who makes key government decisions. This smaller group is the cabinet. It is a group within the executive government that consists of the prime minister and top-level ministers. Now, typically, the cabinet would have about 17 to 19 ministers who make the main decisions of the executive government. And it is the cabinet that directs government policy and makes decisions about national issues. It should be noted then that neither the Queen nor her representative, the Government General, is accountable personally to Parliament. Instead, it is the cabinet who has responsibility to Parliament. And in relation to the Federal Executive Council, in practice, it actually just rubber stamps the decisions of the cabinet. We can also have a better sense of what responsible government means in practice by looking at these two videos. One shows how the U.S. President deals with the U.S. Congress, and the other video shows how the Australian Prime Minister engages with the House of Representatives. President of the United States. It is our generation's task then to reignite the true engine of America's economic growth. A rising, thriving middle class. <laughs> Nothing I'm proposing tonight should increase our deficit by a single dime. Now is not the time to gut these job-creating investments in science and innovation. Now is the time to reach a level of research and development not seen since the height of the space race. We need to make those investments. The greatest nation on Earth cannot keep conducting its business by drifting from one manufactured crisis to the next. Tonight, I propose a Fix It First program to put people to work as soon as possible on our most urgent repairs like the nearly 70,000 structurally deficient bridges across the country. The time has come to pass comprehensive immigration reform. Now's the time to do it. Now's the time to get it done. The 
Mr. Speaker, the big question this week is can we believe what the Prime Minister says? So, so let us start with his credibility gulf over the election. The Prime Minister was asked this. Hand on heart, if the polls showed a 100-seat majority, would you still have called off the election? And he said yes. <laughs> does, he ex does he expect anyone to believe that? <laughs> and Mr Speaker, I will take no lectures from the Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> this summer, I will take no lectures from the Leader of the Opposition, who this summer was for grammar schools, against them, and then for them again. Who was for VAT on airfares and then against it. Who was for parking charges and then against it. Who was for museum charges against it. I will take no lectures from the Leader of the Opposition about the economy. He's the first Prime Minister in history to flunk an election because he thought he was going to win it. <laughs> does, he, does, he remember, does he remember writing this? It's in his best-selling book about courage. As far back as I can remember, I've been fascinated by men and women of courage. Stories of people who took brave decisions in the service of great causes, especially when more comfortable and far less dangerous alternatives were open to them. Does he realise what a phony he now looks? Has he found a single person who believes his excuses for cancelling the election? I have seen enough of good people on both sides of this chamber to have some respect for the Labor Party. The Labor Party of which it was once said there was a light on the hill, working for the betterment of mankind, not just here but wherever we can lend a helping hand. That once great political party is now reduced to being a life support system, a political life support system for just one person the current Prime Minister. Well, I say to the current Prime Minister, for your party's good, you should go. Yeah. For your party's good, you should go. For our country's good, you should go. You should go. We are a great people. We are a great country. I very much fear that we can never reach our potential under this Prime Minister and this government. I think it's time to give the people a chance to choose the Prime Minister and to choose the government on the 50th anniversary of the faceless men being photographed on the Daily Telegraph, I say, let's get rid of the faceless men, let's have a new Prime Minister and a new government.